or have some congruency what we're what the hell we're talking about and stuff. So, all right, folks, welcome FMA discussion. This is episode 132, and tonight we are featuring FMA Pulse. We have Guru Mike and Guru Jesse. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, Dean, for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 I mean, um, I always knew about you guys and uh, and um, and all that. And then one day, I'm not sure what triggered it, but I'm um, say, hey, you know, you know, these guys. They deserve to be on, man. I, I gotta get these guys on. And uh you know, I, I didn't um I knew you've been around, but uh, nowhere to the magnitude of uh, how long you've been around and, and all that. So uh, we're gonna and which we're gonna cover all that, of course, and that. But uh, just um you know, before we get, we dive into the uh FMA pulse, uh the whole co what's the um I don't know if I talked to anybody in Illinois, what's the um the whole uh, COVID situation there. Like, are you uh, total lockdown, partial lockdown? What's what's we're, going on as far as anything that falls under the umbrella of health club? I, guess. I think we're phase three now or something like that. I mean, re restaurants are partially opened. Um, gyms are partially opened. Um, it varies from county to county within Illinois. Chicago is like its own little, I guess, it's own country. Little country. <laughs> country. <laughs> uh, but it is slowly opening up. Um, they're rolling out vaccines. Uh, I think phase three or phase four, but they did stop the Johnson and Johnson, um, which is weird. Mm. I got that shot last Sunday, right before they put a pause on it. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, is that a one shot or two shot? Well, the Johnson, Johnson is a one shot deal. The Pfizer is a two shot. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Pfizer and Moderna. Right, right. And um, so when you say when you say phase three and phase four, that means the higher the phase, the less restrictions. Right. Is that Okay. 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 I think like awesome. even jujitsu schools are opening again, or they have been. Oh, they're, they're, oh, they're letting now. Limited, I mean, limited. But yeah, jujitsu schools are closed. And, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's where we are here. Like um, even like workout gyms, um, that you can be open, but uh, definitely, I think it's twelve feet now. Oh wow. Okay. Definitely masks still. So hopefully mm -hmm. by summer, that all just goes away. <laughs> Who would have guessed we would have been in this county here? Right. And it's still going on. You know what I mean? Good heavens. Wow. All right. Um, so let's uh, – okay. So, you know, before we jump – like, uh, if you guys are just jumping in, please tell us where you're watching from and hit that like button, and we're going to get jumping in right now. So before we jump into the whole FMA Pulse thing, I mean, obviously you guys are practitioners and all that. So, you know, just, you know, starting from, like, your first exposure, like, what was your um, – what was your – you know, your first event experience as far as style, age, when, what have you. Do uh, you want me to go first, Jess? Or? Yeah, yeah we'll go back first. If you want to go yeah. first. Um, right. Well, my first experience with FMA, um, I've, I've always known about Filipino martial arts, you know, through Black Belt magazines when I was a kid. You know, you would see like uh, Guru Dan and Santo and things <laughs> like that. But I never witnessed FMA in real life until around maybe like 2000, 2001. Um, in Chicago, we would have a bunch of um, grassroots organizations that would hold uh, like cultural events, especially on uh, Philippine Independence Day. You know, they would have the Philippine dance, Philippine music, you know, that kind of stuff. And then I first saw an FMA demonstration and instantly fell in love with it. So that was my first exposure. How old, uh, do you recall your age? It's probably like... Uh, Maybe late twenties. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, late right. 20s. and uh, yeah, I didn't realize. Uh, I, you know, my um, Abenir coach lives in Chicago, uh, Marvin Mendoza. I didn't realize oh, really? that Chicago. It's like the second highest, as far as Filipino population, or the third. I mean, it's off, I mean, up there. It's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, which you know, that's that's that was kind of neat there. Um, so that was okay. So twenties, your late twenties, and uh, and it was just a demo, no particular style. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and at the time, FMA. I didn't know anything about styles. I just thought FMA was FMA. You were just seeing like six flying sticks around and, and, and you know training knives and stuff like that. And it's like I gotta, I'm liking that. Wow. And how about you, Agu? Just what was uh same question for you? You know, what uh, age, when, where? So I, the first time I was exposed to uh, FMA was 2004, and that was when I was about 24 years old. Um, it was in a backyard actually. Um, 
at the time I was training for MMA uh, right after college. And then you know, through my martial arts network, they're like, hey, uh, they're teaching this, you know, probably a screamer class uh, at my buddy's backyard. That was my backyard, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just, just to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's how I first got exposed. And I was just like, you know, oh, cool. It's like, it's, you know, it was gritty. It was, you know, backyard, not really formal. Um, and yeah, I did it that summer, uh, to that summer of 2004. And then I, I took a break and didn't really start taking it seriously until 2009. So, mm, yeah, that's the first thing I noticed, you know, because I came from a Taekwondo background. Mm -hmm. Same here. And so when I went to my first, if I may, you know, I'm assuming there's going to be some type of protocol as far as when you enter and who you're bowing to or, you know, what do you have to say if there was particular verbia, or, you know, whatever, whatever kind of fell under the realm of the protocol, so to speak. So I go there and um, it's like nothing. And I'm like, huh, this is this is kind of different and neat, man. I don't have to be on my worried about who I got to bow to or anything like that. It's, you know what I mean? So that, that's the first thing I noticed besides obviously the weapons flying around that um, it was just like in every, and it's always everyone I've been to or been a, or system been exposed to. That's, that's been the norm. You know what I mean? I've never gone or been in an FMA class where there'll be some salutes. I mean, don't get me wrong, but that whole over, I don't want to say over the top because that's not fair maybe, but you know, just, I guess a lot of the protocol wasn't there, you know? And uh, so, all right. So Mike, you've seen this. So you see this, um, you know, on the street there, the fair, what have you, you know, and all this, and you're, you're being exposed. Like what, after that, you know, through your interest, what, um, was there a particular system that you looked in a phone book? I mean, or, how'd you... I, I wasn't even real. Well, obviously after then we went up to the, the group that was doing the demo and then talking to them and then found out that they were holding classes nearby in Chicago. So I started attending class and then that was it. And then, and then uh, Jesse, you met up at the same kind of, and so the classes were being like in the backyard. Jesse, is that where you kind of then yeah. met Mike? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so through the grassroots organization um, that was, uh, my cousin was involved with back then. That's why I met Mike and then the whole thing. Um, so with, in terms of like training, it was like old traditional garage backyard training. Uh, when it got cold, we would go to a park district or we'd rent out. Uh, if we could find one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The sub leading like. Yeah, uh, we were always nomadic. Like, I'm sure a lot of FMAers can relate to that. Yeah, you just no. train where you can. Yeah. Or we yeah, I think that's, uh, that's definitely a characteristic, man. You're either subletting. Or right. You're, right. You know yep. I mean? You're using the basement of a town hall mm -hmm. or a church mm -hmm. or uh yeah. you know, <laughs> but well, definitely yeah. subletting is in that equation yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> Jeez. Especially, me uh, <laughs> any no, questions yeah no we would, no we would be like um training especially like in other martial arts schools or like fitness gyms um and they always put us in those weird time slots where no, when nobody would be around. No, I, I know, I know. Or we had to know. train in the boxing ring because that's all that. that you know, you're, that get, I know, you're not going to get like the prime, you're get the prime real estate. Yeah, exactly. You're not getting. You're not getting the prime time in the corner in the back or that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, we got a. You know, we we got a, a Wednesday night at ten o'clock for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I oh, I know. It's it's like. Uh, I've been like lucky, like uh, the place uh, pre-COVID, like uh, I was there like when they, a day they had no classes. So that worked out. And then another day I got was just after it was 7.30. So it, it wasn't that late, but I was, I was fortunate though. Cause I've heard the nightmare stories where, you know, they're just, they're getting what they can get or, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, man. I mean, it, as we know, um, you know, I mean, it's only a handful I know of like, schools are just fma i think like tim hartman obviously google dan but you can't really say google dan because he's got jkd yeah. and everyone see a lot and everything else uh, everything else under the sun um so really hartman um hartman <laughs> was that san francisco escabo de an with, uh, oh, okay, okay, and then uh, um, oh, Mark Makita. Mark Makita was doing. He was all okay. He was all FMA. Yeah, it's very rare 
Fair but enough. I mean, again, though, like, again, we're, you know, we're counting on a hand, you know what I mean? Just, you know, I was able to like, I mean, do it and do it successfully, you know? Um, so what style, so let's go, I mean, so, you know, what styles, uh, you know, I, I know you guys told us about your first kind of experience, your first exposure. Um, before we get into, you know, what styles you guys do and try to train, what have you, like, what would you guys think of the initial experience? I mean, like, you know, obviously, you know, you guys, did you guys do any martial arts training before that? Like, just in general? I start out uh, with Taekwondo, too, like you, Dean. When I was yeah, uh, okay. eight years old, saw Enter the Dragon with my brother, and that was that was it. That's where my martial arts journey began. And, and you were kicking away. Enter the Dragon, yeah. But <laughs> Taekwondo, I did that for, for many years. Yeah. How yeah. about you, uh, Guru Jess? Uh, let's see. I was probably five years old, and it was an after-school karate program at the gym <laughs> at my grade school. Um, and then from there, uh, I had two older brothers growing up, so it was like the art of getting my ass kicked by my two older brothers. <laughs> um, and then- uh, What style do you do? The style, style again, self-defense <laughs> against older siblings. Exactly. <laughs> and then like um, in high school, uh, I got into playing uh, American football. So I was like, oh, cool. I could you know knock people over. You can actually run into people. <laughs> um, so I played football. And then when I started training, um, like for mixed martial arts, I was doing like a hybrid of um, Taekwondo, boxing, uh, Sunda, um, a little bit of combative Tai Chi concepts, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, and then I just kept getting injured. So I never really got to fight, fight. <laughs> uh, and I was going broke because it was like $250 a month for like training. And I was just like, you know, came to the point where I'm like, yeah, I don't enjoy this anymore. I'm broke. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's too much to make it happen. And just, and you're getting injured. And that's, man, that's not a good equation, man. That's, the, <laughs> that's a tough equation. Man. Yeah. When Jesse first showed uh, up, um, he was all about MMA. Yeah. He was really training to become an MMA fighter. Oh wow, wow, yeah. I mean, that's neat because I mean, I have the utmost respect. I mean, that's a lot of time, effort, you know, dedication, man. You know, the, and all that. Wow. And you said Sunda, did you? Am, am I correct in that? Yeah, Sunda, the Chinese kickboxing, like their version of Muay Thai. Wow, wow. I've heard that. But just, wow, that's neat. Wow, wow, really neat. Um, so then, okay, so what? Next up, like what? Uh, Again, we don't need instructors' names. Just you know, what style? Um, what are you doing when you're in, in the uh, backyard there? What have you? Was it what style was was focused on? Uh, it all depended on what the instructors wanted to teach that day. Um, the, the flavor of the day, <laughs> or the flavor of like those that week. Um, so it, they would always give praise to whatever technique or style they were teaching. They're like, okay, this is going to be Inai and seven. Um, they're like, all right, this is from Inno Santo blend. This is going to be, um, you know, Silat or Mu uh, Muay Thai from Ajar and Chai uh, lineage. Mm. Uh, uh, Villabril also. Villabril. So definitely all components under the Santo blend for sure, for sure. Villabril. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's neat. So you got like in one setting, you kind of got, you know, different pieces from different systems and all that. Um, neat, neat. So I want to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Yeah. We got ah GM Dan Julius. Hey guys, if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from and all that. So uh, all right. So after that, was there a net? Was there a stop after that? Or how long were you guys there? You know, training, training there together. Let's see. Um, so like for me, like I started taking it seriously in 2009. Um, I took a break around 2013 when I went to grad school. And then started up again in 2016 after I graduated. Um, and then that's when I met a friend who moved to Chicago who uh, who was teaching and studying Balintawak. So I started cross-training in Balintawak. And then from there, I was like going back to the backyard training and then cross-training with my friend um, at his apartment. Or he would rent out a space, the martial arts school near him. So I was like pretty much bouncing back and forth between styles. Mm, so pretty much the backyard, the the kind of the eclectic blend there, and then yeah. blend a lot. And uh, oh, speaking of which, June is here. 
<laughs> Joan, we were just talking about you. All good stuff, of course. Um, <laughs> still owe him a coconut drink. Um, but yeah. <laughs> it's coming up next year, Joan. But uh, so then, how about you, how about you uh, <clears throat> Guru Mike? Uh, at the backyard, any other stops, styles, um, what have you? Yeah, I've been uh, actually the last several years. I've been focusing more on boxing and jujitsu, things like that. Um, yeah, I kind of did the reverse of Jesse, where Jesse started out with that stuff early on. I don't know. As I'm getting older, I just I I really want to get back into boxing. You know, while I can still do it, sort of, because I'm I'm 50 years old. So, you know, it's uh, it, it takes a toll on the body. So I, I just want to yeah, do it I, while I, I still can. Yeah, I love it too. It, it's something I still. Uh... Jesse's turn for the coconut. <laughs> yeah, that's too funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I have affinity for boxing too because mm -hmm. it goes so well with um, for me. You know, if I may, and also I have a strong. Oh, totally. Well, yeah. I don't want to say strong, but I have a a JKD background. Okay. So uh, the whole you know power side forward and all that, and um, you know went well with it. But you know, but so what I do now is I try to intentionally stay left lead for boxing just so i get some you know uh, and then right lead for weapons and so i make a point to do boxing just so i can pr intentionally go left lead you know mm -hmm. and all that um yeah i agree so i, I like that as well so then so what is yeah you know, so based on all that what's the um next uh what's the current focus as far as your you know fma styles and all that like i mean what are you guys currently working on or are experiencing or are striving for like current, you know, and with respect to your current journey. I mean, with me, it's like, I just love to cross train, um, mm. more, more so focusing on, you know, health, um, you know, practicality, but also the art form at the same time. Um, for me, it's like, uh, when we were in California a few years ago, we were like trying to interview and cross train with as many people as mm. in the Bay area. Um, and then the same thing uh, here in Chicago, and then same thing with like when I go to Florida next week. Um, you know, I'm gonna start meeting people there and start cross training. So I'm like, I'm all, I'm always an open book. Like I always want to learn, you know, mm. different perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. No, no, I, I'm the same way, man. If you can, I, mean, I just like I just love seeing other people's styles, and methodology. I, you know, I've always that's always fascinated me. You're Jesse what, and I, you're Jesse and I, are really big on, into that. It's yeah, I just think there's just, I think it's a great thing. I think yeah. you're only I think you're only improving your journey and exposure to other stuff and 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 further heightening your journey and all that and bring it to you know you know other levels and what have you. And so I don't I just think it's a, I wish I wish more would do it. You know what I mean? I just think I think this you know the one thing that came out of this COVID thing I'm just you know noticed and I think. I think there's more that's happened because of the online training. I think people that normally would never do it because of like nothing going on. I think you saw students, not so much instructors per se, but more in a student base. You know, I saw a lot like veering out and taking like different people's classes and, and all that. And um, I think that's one of the good things that came out of this pandemic. You know what I mean? I definitely noticed that where like, you know, through uh, whether it would be, you know, the Visayan, you know, out there, those guys out there in uh, Oakland or, you know, it was other classes, whether it was PTK, other classes being off. I definitely noticed students crossing over and checking things out where I don't know if that, I don't know if that would have happened as much if it weren't for the online thing, you know, just, but uh, you guys mentioned California. When did you guys go there? Uh, I went there. 2018 was the last time. Uh, I went there in 2017, and then again in 2018. Wow, who'd you who'd you get to train with out there? I mean, that's like the, you go to Stockton, Los Angeles. Would you? Uh, no, no, we were mostly in the Bay Area. Um, Bay. So, I, uh, so we have a good relationship with uh, Escabo Daan out in the Bay Area, um, and from there, their heavily network uh, uh, their network is pretty much expanded to a lot of the FMA groups out there. So mm -hmm. when we were doing interviews, they're like. Oh, okay. Um, so there's Sencoteros, there's uh, Latosa, there's the original Hiron, uh, Grandmaster Mike Hiron. We, we hang oh, out man. With him. oh, so you got the chance. Okay. Oh, great guys. And uh, uh, 
Master uh, Carlito Bonjock. And Carlito. He was on here. I've had him on the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a great, great guy. I'm so yeah. glad he's doing better too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, he was he was really I enjoyed having him on here. Um so while you get to like kind of move around they're, they're I mean them and their students, I'm guessing. And then uh yeah, I mean, you know, we had the opportunity to meet and interview him. Did, did a little cross training with uh Grandmaster Art Gonzalez before he passed away. Yeah. Um so it was mostly one on one with the instructor. Um mm. And then normally we get like a, a private while we're doing the interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah right. That's yeah. a benefit. Yeah. That's a benefit we get. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, with the benefit, right? One of the uh, definitely the benefits. So, um, so you guys went out there twice. Wow. So that must have just been like not just from the interview point of view, but just from seeing different stuff and all that. I mean, did you? I mean, what are the takeaways? Like, would you recommend people to do that? I mean, if they can, just to be. Had, you know, that whole lens of different styles being exposed to different instructors and all that. I'm sure it sounds if like you have your well fundamentals made. down. It, it's okay. If you're a complete beginner, that might throw you off. Well, this is a good point. Let's go into that because, right, if somebody new who's maybe, you know, just starting out, it could be overwhelming, I'm guessing, huh? I mean, you could tell, uh, like, if a karate guy or a taekwondo guy first starts FMA, the movements are, are very taekwondo or very yeah, karate. Yeah. And a lot of times they have a hard time. Uh, you know, switching to the FMA movements, mm. you know, so. No, no, there's definitely an adjustment. I mean, just, I mean, totally from going from a kicking system forms to. And, you know, those, those, those hard stances, you know. And yeah, you know, I know, I know. Where we're more, FMA is more fluid and loose and. Yeah, like, right, right. Trend. No, 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 definitely. That would be. So, yeah, that's a good point, though. Like, right. If you got a good background, sure, go out there and, you know, that. But, right, if you're just starting out, that could be. Right. Really overwhelming being exposed to like 10 different systems or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, wow. Like, you know, on your mindset too. It just like, I mean, for me, like, uh, I like to travel. I like to, you know, meet new people whenever I can. And it's just uh, in a way, like the reason why I, I kind of focused on FMA was just to get in touch with, you know, my culture again. Cause uh, I was born in Canada, I grew up here. Um, so I wasn't really exposed much to, you know, Filipino culture until probably in my late teens, early 20s. So this is like a way for me to like reconnect again. Because um, growing up, most of my friends growing up were either Haitian or Puerto Rican uh, with, this, you know, with one Greek guy and one Jewish guy. So it was like, I wasn't really exposed much to Filipino culture growing up, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then when you say growing up in Chicago, right, 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 yeah. Oh, wow, jeez. So when I'm... Um, if there's a takeaway, like, was there a particular system out there that you, when you guys that, um, you don't have to say instructor, but like, kind of are a few systems. Let's do that. A few systems that really resonate with you and that you like would maybe like to go deeper into. Like, wasn't a like a particular attraction to any particular system that you guys saw out there? I mean, for me, like, I know for me personally, I know what I like. Um, I really. When I saw, let's see, I was in North Carolina for uh, Grandmaster Bobby Tabata's Blintowak seminar, and he had a couple of um, guest instructors there from other styles. So there was so much that I was like, man, I like that. Like, I want to learn FCS because I saw Tuhan Ray. That's how, how I first met him. Uh, okay, I had him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, got Puno, got him, but I was like, oh man, I love that Largo. I like how, I like how yeah. he's doing that Largo. Um, I like his Puno. <clears throat> It's nice. Um, and then I saw Amaguru Pambuan from Pambu Narnis. I'm like, ooh, I like how he uses that whip. I want to learn how to use a whip. Now. The whip, I knew. I did it when I was with Sayak, man. We, had, we did the whip. Yeah, the whip's pretty fun. Yeah. If you don't mind getting. You know? I'm not sure the guy you know, he's doing it on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you don't that hit yourself with close. it. That gets pretty close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to remember, like, when I was learning, man, hitting myself with it. I was just like, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, but it, if um, once you get the hang of it, though, it, it is kind of fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, for, uh, for flexible weapons there. Um, yeah, he's, there's a system. His name has come up, Raff, uh, GM Rafi. Um, that, uh, I'm on there, and he's somebody. Is he? Is he lo Florida? Is it? Where is he located? Yeah, he's in Florida. I forgot which area of Florida he's in. Yeah, yeah. Now his name's come up, and uh, and all that. Yeah, somebody that. 
Oh, we got to do both gentlemen. Okay. We got a question here from Julie, from Brian. To both gentlemen, who was their first female instructor to train with? And did they, res uh, they respect the most? Okay, so this is a question to both of you from Brian. And this question is, um, oh, my God, it pops up. Oh, Orlando, thank you, GM Dan. I guess he's in Orlando, uh, GM Raffney. Uh, to both gentlemen, who was the first female instructor to train with the one they – uh, respect the most and that is from uh and this is from a question from brian to both of you well it, it's tough because we didn't really meet a lot of female instructors per se i mean we had females that was training with us but not one not the ones that were actually like teacher guru level mm. the first one that i actually met um uh, is a uh, guru uh edie messina um Oh, familiar. Yeah. Uh, San Miguel, right, Jess? Yeah. She was a San Miguel Screma, and then she just she started her own group out in the suburbs. San Miguel? Oh, really? Yeah. Where's she located? Uh, she's in Illinois, like in the northern suburbs. I don't know. Wow, I didn't know. I mean, because that's that's enough. There's a style that, uh, as far as I know, I didn't I didn't know how many instructors there were presently. Wow, San Miguel, huh? Yeah, because wow. uh, every year in Illinois before the pandemic, um, there was we would have this event called uh, Katipunan, where we would have different instructors of different styles. Oh, that's wow. Come out and do like a free seminar. So that's how we first, I was first exposed to like a female guru. Um, and of course, uh, I've heard about uh, Pichi, Kali Silistrisimo, yeah. uh, but you know I've met a lot of female. Uh, instructors uh especially in the bay area but you know they all learned it from a man so it was like it was rare that you would see a female that just says like all right well, i'm doing this. yeah that's actually like head the group or, or the style per se and i gotcha i gotcha yeah um we do want to have a segment in the future though uh covering uh female fma instructors that is something trying, that we want yeah. no 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 matter of fact i i'm getting I got one coming on this month, a couple nice. of next month. I'm, so I'm making a point, like, definitely for them to be heard mm -hmm. and, uh, and and all that. So, yeah, that's always been a goal of mine. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, you know, they, they should be heard. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, they're part of the community, you know. And, um, you know, obviously it goes on saying it's male, you know, dominant, but still doesn't mean they shouldn't be heard and, you know, what have you. You know, just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions here. The bandit, but this that is where Tucson is. The bandit. <laughs> I don't think they're currently not part of the bandit system. <laughs> but uh, so uh, I was gonna say that. Um, so yeah, I just want to touch base on that. What you mentioned about Chicago, man, that sounds like really neat. Is that a common? Like, is a uh, was that? I mean, obviously COVID. I know put a kibosh and everything, but um, that had to be really neat. Like again. Everybody, get, and the only reason why I'm asking you is I'm trying to do something like that in Connecticut where um, in the summer, I'm hoping, again, COVID being a major part of it, of course, to basically get a bunch of FMA instructors mm -hmm. and each, you know, whether it's a half hour each or whatever, you know what I mean? And the money can go to charity over there or whatever. Um, but uh, how, I mean, how was it set up? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious for a few reasons. One, you know, for future uh, tents, and two, just, it sounds just interesting, you know, uh, how many, like, styles, generally speaking, you know, came out? Uh, well, usually it was, like, a one-day event, uh, and depending on who agreed to, you know, donate their time for that seminar, uh, we had, of course, you know, there's the Pia Piquiti Tertia, um, uh, San Miguel Estrema, uh, Balintawak, um, Inayan, um, uh, one time, uh, Grandmaster, uh, Sippin from Wisconsin came down. Um, and then, uh, let's see who else, uh, you know, cause we've had this over the years. Modern Arnis. Modern Arnis. Arnis. Oh, Remy. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, I think one year with, uh, oh, Jack, of course. Jack, you know, yeah. Who was that? Garumot. 
think about our niece. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. GAT. I got you. Okay. 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 Also, we've had like other guest instructors of other styles. So we've had like also like Silat and Muay Thai. You know? Oh, okay. They were also okay. So it wasn't just didn't have to be just FMA. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, wow. Bahadzubu. Um, the guys from Minnesota that came down one time. Oh, oh yeah. wow. That's right. That's right. I knew there was a. Uh, Midwest chapter. Okay. Uh, Dick Hitty Tirsha, that was one time. Yep. Dick, oh, and that's uh, under Nene. Uh, no? Yeah. Nene. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 John Minarski, by chance? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 That was years ago, though. Years ago. So, wait, were you guys part of the podcast with him? Hmm. No, 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 no. That was okay. Somebody different. Uh, okay, FME no. talk? The only reason I asked is no, that's right. The other person from FMA talked was from the Midwest chapter of Bahatsubu. Okay, no, I, I'm just okay, okay. Wow, that's not, so. Like, uh, how long, generally speaking, just like how long was it? Like, how many uh, was it? Half day, so to speak, or half long? Normally, it's full day. Full day. day. Full day? Yeah, jeez. At the end of summer or early fall, uh, yeah, it would be like a six, eight hour thing. Um, we would break for lunchtime, and by the time you know, whoever the last instructor was, the, the crowd kind of dwindled out because everyone's tired. So yeah, I know it's on the heat and you're just, no, that could be, yeah, no, it could be. Yeah. Again, it's something we want to do. We're just trying to, again, COVID's going to be the major factor in this whole thing, but assuming that, you know, it goes away or the restrictions go away, I should say. Um, it's something we want to, try to do you know i just think it's such a great thing i mean everybody come they make a donation for charity and these people i mean think about it you know whatever donations let's say it's you know it's a four hour thing and you know you get 20 bucks but think about that for 20 bucks you get to be exposed to you know whatever six six eight systems you know for example i mean to me that's I mean, that's a bargain you know what i mean something like you know so i think there's such a good thing and not, and not, not just and also, obviously, for the exposure, you know, aspect of it too. You know what I mean? Um, you know, that's the whole problem. FMA as a whole. You, you know, I one of the reasons why I chose to do the show just for exposure. You know what I mean? Like a voice. I mean, you know, other. We really don't have one. I mean, we're starting to get one. You know, uh, but it's nothing like MMA or BJJ or the traditional. I mean, it's you know, it's getting killed. You know, so. You know, do you guys, you know, just before we jump in, I mean, Paul and all that, um, you guys kind of, uh, what, what do you guys, you know, what's your lens on that as far as how, how to, you know, how to get more exposure? I mean, I only ask that because you, you guys are kind of the same, you know, similar, doing similar things as I'm doing and others. I mean, what, any, uh, what's your guys' idea on that? How we can, I guess, make it more prolific or more exposure or, I don't know. No, is, it, is it? I mean, is it because like when you talk to people, like a lot of things I hear is marketing issue. Well, you know, FMA doesn't market well, you, you, you know, and um, and and I think that's part of it. But I think the all I think the other part of it is though is um, more. I, I think we it's got to be. I don't know if it's infomercial. I, I don't know. You know, I'm just thinking out loud here, like how to you know make it where you know it is more you know where people become the no FMA as, you know, not just like, what, you know, what's that? Like, you know, you can go to an average home and you say MMA, you know, they know it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering if there's a way kind of slowly but surely to get FMA like that, where it's, where it's you know, a recognized term you know, and all that. And um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I'm not saying I have the answer. I'm just. Uh, we don't for sure. Because we, we still encounter that even at my boxing gym, you know, I'll, yeah, I also train in FMA. Oh, what's that? Uh, I, no, I know. Our knees. What is that? I know, uh, I know, stick I know, fighting, knife fighting. Oh, what's that? It's, I know, I know, I know. Well, uh, we have a YouTube channel. Check it out. You'll see what it's about. <laughs> you see what I mean? You know what I mean? Because they, they, no one's heard of it. it even now. Or, I know. You know, know. they're like really into martial arts, they might have heard of it or something like that. But. Because I thought about that too. Um, and it's just how it's portrayed to the mainstream, the media. Um, if you remember, like in the the seventies, and um, it was like kung fu because of Bruce Lee. Oh my god, karate kung fu, huge, yeah. And I remember, like I remember, we called it. It was called Samurai Sunday, uh, where 
you know, they would show all the Kung Fu flits from the Shaw brothers. <laughs> and they were able to show their, you know, the culture of, you know, you know not, not just the martial arts, but the culture where it's coming from. And then during the 80s, the whole ninja, karate, Chuck Norris, Shokazugi, you know. There, that took off. You know, that they were able to showcase the Japanese culture and the martial art within that time frame. And they knew it was ninjutsu. They knew they were ninjas. Yeah. You know, because when we had our FMA movement, if you want to call it that, with the you know the Hollywood movies and stuff with the Hunted and Born Identity, born, even yeah. Tommy Lee Jones got it wrong. I saw an interview of him uh, for the Hunted, and I mean that was straight out Sayok, you know. Oh, and uh, I know when I was we asked him, that, that was a that was a talk of the town. If I was with Sayok then, that was a talk of the town when that movie came out. That was that was epic. Yeah, and the time mm -hmm. John blew it. They asked him like what it was, and he said it was like Salat, or it came from Malaysia. I'm like, oh man, come on! <laughs> the, uh, one time, the one time, the one time. I know he couldn't even he couldn't even get it right. Oh my gosh! I know, I know. I'm just wondering, wondering challenges that we have. No, I'm just wondering. Like, I, I know. I'm just thinking. Like, and here's there's supposed to be something coming out this summer. I want to say. I don't know if it's an I think it's I think it's gonna be animated. Yeah, the one um, just, I'm, I'm guessing Raja, Disney Raja, 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 something like that. Raja, yes. Yeah, Disney yeah, movie? yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm wondering if I because I think that's gotta be part of it. Like I, I think there has to be it obviously the cinema has it's gotta be a piece of it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, obviously, you know, whether it's infomercials or whatever, I mean, but there's gotta be like where it becomes more known before we can even begin to grow it. And right now, that, I think that's the biggest challenge, you know? Um, There's a lot of people in the Filipino culture. You know, um, and because like even outside of the Philippines, you know, when people say you're, you're Filipino, they're like, where's, where's that at? Uh, like, you know, growing up, they're like, where's that? Where's that? And where's, yeah. Like, and they'll say like, you know, when I, you know, cause my last name is Santiago, they're like, are you Spanish? And oh like, yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you guys run into that, right? Cause of the Spanish surnames, I'm sure you're, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, we're Filipino. I'm like, and you know, they're confused. They're like. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah, I bet. No, I, yeah, I can see why. But, um, you yeah, know, because there are the, the other thing too, I think it has to go in conjunction. I think it needs to grow over there. And I hear in the Philippines, I hear it's becoming like there was a time when basketball and Taekwondo were, were like more, you know, more popular than, the, you know, than the indigenous arts. But I think it has to start there and kind of move toward the West and with Holly and with help from Hollywood. You know what I mean? I, I think all those pieces put together, I think, and from what I understand, there's really some significant efforts over there, like get kids programs and, and, you know, obviously it's a national, the sport and, and all that. But I, I think, um, I think there's a bunch of pieces though that have to kind of, kind of come together, you know, and, uh, and I hope it does. I, I, I really do. What's your take on would be some kind of unity within the FMA community? I think that would, it doesn't help. That that would, there's so much uh, fighting and that all that. Would, it doesn't help. Doesn't that help. would help. I know it's ridiculous. I see it. I see it in my group. It's just like, and that's, you know, even within groups, it, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, uh, I don't know. I think it just FMA has to get their act together sometimes. And, and I think that affects the marketing because here's yeah. the thing, if, if, the, if it's not even a collective force and you got Pete, you got a tribe over here and you got a tribe over there and here, there, there, I mean, how the hell are you going to get to a, a common goal? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, you know, if we can't even get our act together, then how is it ever going to really get out into the mainstream? You know what I mean? No, it's so true what you're saying, Guru Mike. There's this guy, I'm not going to mention his name. He's very controversial, very controversial. And uh, some of the stuff he says is, you know, is pretty wild. But there's one thing, I read this, it's, he's on YouTube, and there's one thing, he said it. He basically, in summation, kind of, mentioned what you just said that there's no way it'll grow because a they can't even unite for commonality let alone make it like more of a mainstream art and and uh it, there was other things he said too but it was definitely kind of centered around what you were mentioning and um yeah i i, I don't know i agree just make sure i'm not missing any questions yeah, okay. so like we just have to get over it. The, the old school uh, crab mentality, where if you know, but that crab mentality, crab though, mentality you know, 
one. That's a big one, especially. I know. I see anything. I, I see it. Like I see in the group, this there's like a crabita and this passive aggressive. Like, mm -hmm. like you, you see it. Like, um, you, like at first, and, and here's something really recent. And I, and, and at this point, I just don't care, man. I'm just gonna be truthful. If people want to subscribe to my channel, if they don't watch me anymore. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not the one doing the same thing because you, you never yeah. know like how far you could really, you know, know. express yourself without getting attacked or whatever. What, you know? or, or like depending on what is good, how it's going to be interpreted, yeah. what side of the coin they're on. And but one of the things is, um, is like I put in the FMA discussion. I finally put like, okay, all posts need to be pre-approved. No, did I want to do that? No, <laughs> of course not. Because if I wanted to do that, I would have done it from the beginning. So clearly, that's something I didn't want to do. But as a result of a bunch of just crappy posts coming in, I had to do, instead of going in every day and it just was too time consuming, I finally had to put that in there. But as a result, there's certain people not posting anymore. So there, and so there is, I'm telling you, it's that crap, passive aggressive. And it's, and you, you know, and it's, you know, you go, oh, it's, uh, maybe it's coincidence. No, it's not coincidental. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, you know, it's and and right, but getting back to crab mentality, it's the more prevalent it is and all that. I mean, forget like you know, in other words, like people say, Oh my god, you know, you're doing great, you bring the community together. And I think there has been some changes, and I think there some, you know, I think it's improved. But I think a lot of it though, I hate to say it, there's an aspect of a facade where I, I just I don't know. I think if, where people are really about like unity, I think there's an element that doesn't really want it. I have to, I have to be yeah. honest. You know what I mean? I just, you know, I, I don't know. I tell the pro tell proven wrong, I guess, right? And even the ones that do want unity, you know, there's still ego involved. Absolutely. So which indirectly means, involved. right, which indirectly I feel they really don't want it. Right. Like, you know, you know what like I mean? I see the ones like, like the oh, facade yeah, you're like, saying, being, there's the facade there, and you know, yeah, we want unity. Totally, we want unity. Totally. And, like, and when it comes down totally. to it, and then just petty bullshit. You know what I mean? I know, but there is. There's there's a there's a total facade. And the one that basically, like, I first brought this up to somebody, really somebody high up in the FMA world. And uh, he goes, No, you're absolutely right. There is. He goes, It's not you, and don't beat yourself up. With it. There's totally facade. They're going to tell you. What you want to hear, or they could pretend, but the bottom line is you pull all that away, and it is, and that's it's it's kind of a bummer, it, you know what I mean? It's kind of a bummer because it that's gonna slow and impede us from getting more recognition or widely known, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I don't have the answer. I, I we'll we'll yeah. let you know if we ever find out, dude. But I <laughs> yeah, you know, what I mean? you know what I hate being one of those people you sit in the background and, and like, because I always like to try to like be proactive, like try to be part of the solution. Like, you know, anybody could just sit back and just, you know what I mean? But man, I mean, part of the solution. <laughs> I'm not like saying I'm getting get get anywhere. It's fantastic. What's that? You know, what you're doing with FMA discussion, you know, hats off. Hats off. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's, but it's like. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you're, you're putting yourself out there and, you know what I mean, but at least you're doing something. In, well, this, yeah, and in so, a positive way. I, yeah, totally and, positive. and what I always told myself, I'll keep doing it. One, and two things will make me stop doing it. one: it doesn't yield results, or the results are, become toxic. Mm -hmm. You know, it, when, when those are coming to play, then forget it. And I can't. It hasn't. We're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's uh, let's get on to. Bigger and better things. FMA Pulse. So you guys are like the rock stars of. Uh, no, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys deserve a lot of credit. Come on now. So what was okay? So what was the what was the inspiration and in, uh, when did this inspiration occur? Uh, well, FMA Pulse started around 2007, 2008. Kind of like what Jesse was saying. Growing up, um, I I grew up the same way as a Filipino American. Filipino American, didn't know too much about the history of the Philippines, you know, aside from food, which is, you know, Filipino food. Come on, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I didn't know much about the history or anything other than, you know, Spain colonized it for a few hundred years, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, after I met my now wife, um, you know, and her parents were very involved in the Filipino community, 
So we would have like a Philippine um, history workshops, Philippine uh, dance workshops, singing workshops, you know, because Filipinos love to sing. So um, yeah, I started attending a lot of the, the Filipino history workshops and, and learned a lot about, you know, our heroes in the Philippines and everything like that and how FMA had a role in it. You know, maybe not the FMA that we know now, but the FMA that they were doing back in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, so that kind of inspired me because, uh, you know, I used to read Black Belt Magazine, Kung Fu Illustrated, all that when I was a kid. And, you know, you would see all the grand masters from all the different countries, you know, China, Japan, like, yeah, Yoshiba, um, Funakoshi, Yamaguchi, you know, uh, Jigoro Kano, all those, you know, Ip Man, all those. But it's like, how come we don't have that? In, in these magazines. Good point. You know, right. and we, we, have, we had our own grandmasters, just nobody has, has ever heard of them, except for the people that are, you know, are studying FMA. Mm. So I wanted to do something where I'm a web developer by my nine to five is web development. So I just, I had just the idea to, to create a website that would be a resource uh, informational site that would, you know, help educate people that were interested in, you know, Philippine martial arts who we are, who the lineage, who, you know what I mean? Just all the grandmasters throughout the, you know, the decades that have, have brought this. No, um, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So then, so, all right, circa 2008. So, and so in the beginning, if I'm understanding this correctly, it was more from historical lens, like information kind of way. There, in other words, it wasn't videos yet. It was just more no. like, uh, Facebook. Oh, so it was just okay, so purely kind of like just written, written articles, historical content. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm just gonna turn. Uh, so, Guru Jesse, when um, when did you? Do, were you right there from the get go with him, or is it? Uh, no, I didn't join until maybe 2010. Um, I was just coming off uh, off another business I was working on because. My uh, my first degree was in fine arts, film, and video. So I had a, a video production company with a few college buddies of mine. Uh, and then when we closed down, um, you know, Mike approached me about doing you know doing video work for them for FMA Pulse. So I was like, yeah, why not? And this was the same time I kind of like got back into training again and you know doing FMA specifically. So I got my my, my two passions of video work and martial arts kind of like came together. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, at first, you know, we were like, we should do these interviews with all the gurus and grandmasters and upcoming instructors um, so people can know who they are and what FMA is. Um, before I jumped on board, uh, it was all audio interviews. And then after that, you know, they got, we got a camera and then we started doing video cameras. Uh, I mean, sorry, doing video interviews, um, you know, with this, our basic, you know, Canon camcorder. Whatever was around. Yeah. That. But that, that was years later, though. Yeah, so I mean, so I, I guess, but you, so the initial start was just one one could access basically if they wanted to learn more on the history, they would access FMA Pulse, but it was right. basically just historical content, nothing mm -hmm. far as like interviews or not yet. Yeah. Okay. So when did you guys? Um, when did you guys? Uh, I guess add that, or was there something? Was there a stop in between that from? Well, we definitely had a stop in between there somewhere. It's just, you know, life got in the way, priorities got in the way. And then, you know, and, and Jesse and I, we do this, we, we have to make time for it. It's our part-time thing. We both have nine to fives and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, right, right. Um, you know, it's very time consuming. This is just me and Jesse. It, everything is our time, our money, our everything. So, you know, there's just, there was that time I, where- I, 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 I mean, people understand, man. It's like here, it's like, you know, I, as you guys well know, we're not getting paid to do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we do it because we want to be part of the solution. Uh, we believe in what we're doing yeah. and we want to expose the community to more. And, but yeah, it's not like when we get done, there's a, you know, Twinkie waiting for us. Or right. <laughs> right. <laughs> What up? So, all right. So, you went from the written historical content. Where people, oh, if I could add, Dean, uh, shout out to sure. Perry Malari, who wrote most of our articles on FMA Pulse. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure he's part of this group, but he's uh he's uh um writes for the Manila Times in the Philippines, Manila Times oh, okay. And I found him by chance online. I contacted him. I loved his writing, and he was a 
a long time FMA practitioner and just, you know, it, I'm fantastic. Okay. started writing a lot of our articles for us. And so shout out, oh, Barry. Okay. Love you, man. Barry. All right. So then, so you went from there, like what, you know, did you guys kind of meet and say, hey, you know what, we could do more of this. You know, we could, um, you know, so I guess what was, how'd that come about? Just for people who are listening that they could actually see maybe like the evolution of what you guys have done going from uh, more of a historical storage of content to where now you guys are actually interviewing and now, and we'll, of course we'll get the present day, but did you guys kind of mean to say, you know, we can make this bigger? Well, we always wanted to interview instructors. Once we, we wanted to cover as much of the, you know, the legends, if you want to call them, the, you know, the, <laughs> but even then we're not even nowhere near having all of them on the site. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard to get know, biographies know, and it's, stuff like oh, that. And anyone that can, you know, write something for us. Cause you know, we don't know. So there's still a lot missing. Yeah. Yeah, we got to start anyway, somewhere. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we decided that we wanted to interview the instructors that are alive now also. Yeah, before you, right. I mean, I, obviously, you can always cover the ones that passed away, unfortunately. But, right. Right. It's probably a good idea to get the ones that are still, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So now when you guys, would, so you, you shifted to interviewing. So that was that more where you guys, um, again, not, so obviously they weren't done live. Is it more where you guys would you you would meet up with them depending on obviously location or or is it more yeah, it was the or the phone, phone. Just, oh, yeah, the phone. audio, yeah. audio okay. interviews I don't even want to call them podcasts it's, I don't think they were <laughs> but just yeah audio just interviews call them on the phone and kind of took notes mm -hmm. so to speak okay yeah now is this something you guys would do both together or as much as possible I mean, as much as possible. We try to do it together, but like Jesse's going to Florida, I can't get off work, so he's gonna, you know, cover whatever he can while he's in Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, with me, I mean, when we first started doing the interviews, um, you know, Mike and myself were were, were introverts, so we didn't want to be in front of the camera. We just mm. wanted to focus. Oh, okay, okay. Especially okay. me. Uh, Especially me. Uh, so we, you know, the focus was just wanted to, we wanted it to be on the instructor and their style. Yeah. And since me coming from a film and video background, like my approach to the interviews was more of a documentary. Mm. Um, so I really wanted the interviews to be more of a documentary uh, as opposed to like a, like a formal live um, type of situation. So like we wanted to make them look good um, and then promote them and their system. Uh, and, you know, you know, it's just like what Mike was saying, like, you know, back in the day, I too was reading, you know, Black Belt, Black Belt Magazine, Inside Kung Fu. And, you know, the people that would write those articles you would know them by name, but you didn't know what they looked like. So Mike and myself, we just wanted to be the guys in the background, just yeah. pushing, you know, the content. FMA Plus was you. never supposed to be about us. It was to promote yeah. the Philippine martial arts, the Philippine yeah, culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. culture, the styles. and But, you know, with social media and everything, you know, people want to get to know, you know, to build relationships and all that kind of stuff. So we decided, okay, I think it's probably time to start no, I think it was move on there. I think it was a good, we're going to get to that. I think it was a good move on your part. I think you should, you know what I mean? You guys are, you guys are providing something that not everybody's doing and, and all that. So, I mean, and uh, yeah. so when you guys, okay, so that's interesting. So you guys would do it over the phone. That That's neat. And then, um, so, um, so then, okay. So then you would take basically the transcripts or speak and then put it on the website. Is that kind of how it worked? Yeah, just okay. an audio player. And so they could just hear it. Okay. And folks, I'm going to be listing their website at the end. I'm going to put it down. But those of you who are interested, the website is www.fmapulse.com. Uh, really um, well organized website. Really neat. You guys, you know, you might want to check it out. Um, so I know Cameron, but, but hey, man, you guys are doing okay now. Or, you don't yeah, know how just, nervous I was, Dean, you know, coming up to this interview. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> It's all good, you know. You got to do it. You got to get out of your comfort zone and do it. Okay. Hey. All right, though. Okay. So I'm um, hopefully I'm I'm making it easy and. Uh, oh, it is. It is. Okay. Good, good. 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 Yeah. I told you I was gonna put you guys in the torture chamber. <laughs> when Jesse, when I found out this was live, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> oh, so you were sweating it out. The live part. Yeah. That's. But it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> no wonder why you. And you got a drink. <laughs> oh. I, Started drinking this like 15 minutes before this started, just to 
<laughs> yeah, I can't drink because I got to go somewhere after this. But um, oh, it's funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because with the whole thing with social media, we have friends that do marketing advertising, and they're saying you know, out there the people want to know who are the people behind FMA Pulse. I'm like, so when Mike and myself, you know, we had a meeting, I'm like, what do we want to do? Like, I was gonna say because you know what, I didn't know who was behind FMA Pulse. Jesse, like, tell I, you I, the story of Paul when you were in the that? car with him, Paul Rosales. Oh, yeah. oh, it's funny. Um, so Paul Rosales, he's out in Florida as well. He yeah, was, yeah, I met yeah him in June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he was in in town uh, visiting family, and you know we all met up and we we were doing um, backyard or we were we met up at a gym to cross train and learn Hirosa de Cuerdas from him, and then you know on our way to eat, you know you know we were talking and then. FMA Pulse came up. I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. Uh, me and me and Mike. They're like, wait, you guys? You know, Paul was like, you guys run that? He's like, well, yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, holy shit, I'm a celebrity. I'm like, no, we're not celebrities. <laughs> like, I see that, right, nobody because, knew us. Nobody knew. No, us. matter of fact, I definitely didn't know. I know. I always knew the term, and I knew you guys covered videos, but I didn't know if it was in fact you guys in the videos or you guys. You know what I mean? And then, and then I finally figured out Jesse was part of it. But I had no idea that Jesse had a partner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and Jesse's the one that's normally out there because, uh, again, I like to stay in the background. I'm not, yeah. you know, but I, I'm working on that. No, no, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to work on it for you, man. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, because with the, um, I'm used to speaking and being in front of the camera because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got my, my master's degree in, uh, in education, so I had to force to myself to speak to teenagers and teach them. Mm. And that's why I'm used to speaking and explaining things, you know, in front of a large group of people. Uh, and with my experience in video production, like you know, speaking, you know, documentary filmmaking and, you know, just putting it all together, I I'm used to it. So it was like, it's like second nature to me. Yeah. It was a good synergy, you know, because I was uh, more graphic design, web development, and then Jesse. Yeah, was yeah. Right. And, I mean, so it right. just it, it came together really well. You no, know? it definitely sounds it like if you're both good at one thing. I mean, mm -hmm. right? There would be so no. Sometimes that's it's for the best. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and all that. Yeah, I mean, it can be nerve. I mean, believe me, I remember my first interview late October 2019, and my first three, I I purposely intentionally my no, sorry, my first four. I intentionally got my instructors on because, man, if you're going to screw up, well, at least definitely, if you're comfortable. Do, definitely do with somebody no. that you know. So yeah. Tom Sotis, mm -hmm. I had Tom Sotis for number one, okay. had Bong Abineer for number two, Tom Sotis, part two, number three, and then Bert Richardson for number four. So I got through those four pretty well. And then after that, you know what I mean? By definitely you. There was definitely, I made sure there was a piece of familiarity before I was going to go out there, like, getting somebody that I didn't know. Now, though, it's just like, you know, I can click it. You know, this is why I do the test runs, because I'll find right there if I can click and gel with you or what I need to, like, work on. Okay, I'm going to have to really bring stuff out of him or, okay, uh, this is good. This is good. Just going to fold like this. I mean, he's talking, you know what I mean? And all that. But, you know, the more you do you're able to figure out how you can click with different personalities and all that and it becomes easier and, and all that. But, you know, of course, like you guys obviously know, but I mean, you have to generally enjoy it too. You know what I mean? Like if you look at it as chore oriented, it's not going to be fun for anybody. <laughs> you know right. You know, you're, gonna stop. Like, you know? you're eventually going to stop doing it. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. 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 If, yeah, you if, will, you don't, right. if you don't enjoy it. No, I told oh, right. Or it, the results are just getting like yeah, and people are gonna see that. They're like, okay, these guys do yeah, not want right. to be yeah. there. No, they'll they'll see the change in your dynamic. Like yeah. they'll see like you're not enthused or you're not motivated. Yeah, I, absolutely. And that's when you know when you have to, man, you gotta hang it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, in terms of uh like content going forward, like Mike and myself have other like video ideas for our YouTube channel. Um, one of them, you know, for, for us to get out of our comfort zone, um, is doing vlogs. So we might be doing more vlogs with FMA Pulse. Might be. I thought you were doing that in Florida, Jess. Well, for me, Jess yeah. is going to get the ball rolling <laughs> and the vlog. <laughs> I thought, wait, well, until be. I could catch up, until I could catch up. Might be. I thought you were 
<laughs> no mic, Jess. You're doing it, right? Yeah. Well, for me, yes. I'll be doing. I'll be experimenting with doing the vlogging. Yeah. You could just see, like, I guess who I am and what I do outside of FMA Pulse. Good for you. You know what? That's how you find out. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? I'm really going to get to know know us better that way. I think. I, I. You know what? I think it's a great. I think it's a great thing. I think you guys should definitely do that. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I do. Let's see. Wait. I think I got another question. Seeing that these two have been working this for a decade plus, and they got tons of extra video from the interviews, is there a plan in putting all those in the FMA Pulse site later or long-form video documentary projects with all their footage that must still be, that must still have? So I guess what he's asking is... Um, it's kind of two parts to it is uh, the extra video from the interviews. Uh, is there a plan of putting those in the FMA pulse site or do you just keep them on YouTube? I guess is so. Uh, technically they are on, on the website too, because it pulls in whatever we post on YouTube onto the website. Oh, you, oh, so you, definitely you can see our YouTube over. videos on there too. Okay. 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 All right. So there's def Okay. So there's crossover. And then the second thing is, uh, or a long video form video and documentary projects with all the footage that must still have. So I guess we that do, do you guys still have basically a lot of uh, footage and all that that has not made YouTube or uh, the website? Well, that's the thing. Um, because uh, like before this whole pandemic happened, our goal was to do one featured instructor for each month, and then the rest of the month would be highlighting you know their techniques um for that month so with that with this whole <clears throat> pandemic that kind of threw a wrench in uh, the gears of our goals so i went through all of my hard drives i'm like okay uh let me see what b-roll i have that we could yeah. put together oh the, like the supplement but the, oh, i got you okay okay and that's the thing i was like because mike and myself we were always also discussing about you know techniques with instructors like how mm. they treat different things so I was like going stuff like I went all the way back to 2012 and I was like, oh, OK, uh, this is like from 2012. Uh, the footage is not that great, but, you know, it's it, Jesse it was just digging. It was digging. Yeah. For and I mean, there's some times where we just don't have content, you know, because life gets in the way. No. Yeah. No. I mean, I have, yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. so in terms of like all the stuff that was uh, like that was archived is now already out there. Um, so everything from what we have is on the so you have nothing in on so everything's out there nothing in storage currently nothing in storage um i mean we do have the original interviews um unedited so i don't know you know mike and myself we were talk, trying to see i'm like is there something is there a way maybe we'll release an unedited version uncut of the full-on interviews in the future we'll see but everything you've seen so far on our youtube channel i've Extracted, edited, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys weren't obviously like like all of us weren't anticipating the pandemic. So I mean, I mean, yeah. But and plus, you're going to you're going to Florida soon, so you're going to have new content then. You know? Yeah. So yeah. So you guys will be back on track, wheels going. You know. Um. So then we're okay. Challenges. Like, uh, what challenges have you guys run into with FMA Pulse? in this FMA community of ours? <laughs> uh, well, aside from the, the time constraint, mm. you know, cause just trying to make time for it, aside from our nine to fives, family, that kind of thing. That's probably, for me, that's the biggest challenge. Same here. That's the challenge I'm running into. You were seen it yesterday, Green, yeah. No, that's, no, absolutely. This is why I got, um, I'm going to have Julius and the crew do more, pick up more. Um, I mean, I'm still going to do them and all that, but it's just, yeah. And, you know, it's funny. At least you're keeping it going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But it's just like, I just found it. It's just getting like, um, like you said, it starts, you know, nothing is the more time you're putting to something, that means there's less time being put somewhere else where it's just the way it is. And right. that's, and that's kind of what, um, you know, I mean, yeah, and it's, you know, it's my own doing, you know what I mean? But you know, I have these guys, you know, I, I just got to start using them. So, so that, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, 
it's always the time constraint. Like I always said, like if I could clone myself three or four times and each one of them can focus on a task. Yeah, at least three or four times. <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, people think we have a team. You know, it's just me and Jesse. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, know, like and behind the scenes, we're like you got editing, editing, doing all the you got like eight people. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have a friend, Bert. Shout out to Bert. That helps us film sometimes. He'll be like a the camera guy that will okay, help us yeah. film. But mainly, it's just me and Jesse. We do all the yeah, editing. Yeah, yeah. Just, um, and, you know, I editing know people is very it, man. I tell you, people don't get it. Like what's involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you got you know, obviously you got to generate those people you want to do. Um, you gotta set up the month. Uh, for me, you know, speaking in terms of myself, and then you gotta do test runs. You gotta plug them in when it works for them, and then when it works for you. And then you do the actual interview. Oh, well, no, before the interview, you set up the questions. Mm -hmm. You do the interview. After the interview, you download it. You put it on YouTube. Then you share it. I mean, yeah. I mean, Google, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. I mean, again, I like it, don't really understand what's involved in, in doing these. Definitely. It's definitely. Definitely. A lot, don't. Work, a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, and plus, if you want to do it with, integrity and you want to do it right. you know the best way and yeah i mean absolutely there's definitely 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 a lot of work so outside of like personal like time and all that any other challenges or pretty much just set around as far as time consumption and all that you know for for me it's uh finding what people want to see you know because we're just putting stuff out there that we think or you know we see other people yeah doing. you know like but what they really yeah, but no. is that really what they want to see, or would they rather no, it's see funny. Vlogs, it's a good or would point. they rather see this, or would they rather see that? We we don't know. No, it's a good point because I always wonder that too. Like I like I I try to vary the guests up each month, but I'm not saying that's what they want. I'm mm -hmm. just I'm kind of just guessing. You know what I mean? Like that's we do like, uh, well, we do technique breakdown videos. And I saw those. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. yeah. We're thinking that's more for the people that are first getting involved in FMA or have an interest in learning FMA. I don't think it's for people like yourself or probably most of the audience on FMA discussion that are yes. already practitioners. For us, we're thinking more of our interviews with the with the instructors, grandmasters might be more interesting to to the the group on FMA discussion or you know ex practitioners. If I had a guess, I would I would think so. If I had a guess. Yeah, because you know, most of the I stuff we the techniques are just basic fundamental stuff. Yeah, you know, so that's more for the beginners or people that are just getting into FMA. Yeah, but so still, I, 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 the people definitely appreciate it still. You know Hopefully. I mean? Hopefully, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, and, and this goes out. I hope this goes without saying, but anytime you guys, whatever you want to post in the group, there. I mean, please go ahead. Mm, you, you know, whether it's interviews or anything like that. I mean, you know, I mean, please take advantage of that and do it. You know. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, any other challenges, School of Jesse, besides time? Time. Any like negativity? Have you guys experienced any negativity from the community? I mean, you have those troll comments on our comment section on YouTube. Where, where would FMA be without be without the troll? Martial arts period, or anything. Or martial, I, better yet, martial arts period. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the things, it's like I try to, you know, remain diplomatic and. Response. I know. It gets it gets exhausting. I know. But if it just if they keep on going, and, you know, it's like then I you know I take the Joe Rogan approach. I'm like I don't even read the comments anymore uh, if it's negative, um, and usually they just disappear. Yeah, right. Because if they don't have if they don't have an audience or they're not getting any momentum, you know, they're just gonna go. I had it. Yeah, I had a, We had, we've had a few on the YouTube channel, and and it was basically starting up stuff like. You know, on a bully, you know, the FMA bully stuff, just stuff like that, and you know. How do you yeah. handle that, Dean? Do you give them a warning first, or do you just kind of? Uh, yeah. Up? So, so be in the beginning before you know, like you know, because I was naive. Like I come to find out, like I found out about this person, and he was basically doing this to a lot of groups and channels. But in the beginning, um, I was somewhat naive, and. Uh, so I would try to play nice. Hey, thank you for doing it. You know what I mean? Because I, I tried to take the diplomatic, you know, all that. But then when I found out, like, he, this person absolutely had, like, a, a agenda. And it wasn't, his agenda didn't really involve me on the channel. Uh, then I just, unfortunately, I had to block him. 
because he just kept going. Like I would, I would say, Hey, look, that doesn't, that's not really relevant. If you can, and he, he just kept going. It brings out the energy in the group and the, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and, and with the group too, like, <laughs> like we've had to 20 or so people have had a block. You know what I mean? Of course, you know, you don't want to, it's not your goal, but at the same time, you can't have them just like take over your group or your channel right. or whatever. And just, you know, yeah, doing crap. You know what I mean? I mean, I know everybody's got their opinion and, you know, views and stuff like that, but do it in a respectful way. You can. You know what kills opinion. me? That's what kills me. It's like, I don't understand what's so hard about that conceptually. Right? We're all like, going to just agree on it. It's, what be it's like, a, you know, what kills me is, I know. And what kills me is like, you'll see. And these are people I meet. Like, I don't even give these people a warning anymore. Like, if they call somebody a name, I, I, they're gone. Like, I, I, that, because I've made, and the reason being is, is because I put so many warnings tactfully before that. But like, what kills me is you don't even know this man, but because you're behind a keyboard, you could just call him a name mm -hmm. because of a difference of opinion. You know, none of that. And this, these, there was no pre attack. I mean, I've seen this. Like, you know, they'll just call names. Like, I, that just blows my mind out. Like, I never could understand that. Like, you could call somebody a name that you don't even know because of a difference of opinion. Like that's just my like I just don't get it. Like yeah. how you could get that emotionally charged. Yeah. It's like isn't that, isn't that freaking crazy? Yeah, it's like I mean, I'm sorry, but like high school is over and that like, I mean it's like I don't get it. 30 is just like, you know, I am I'm turning 41 soon and I'm like, I really don't have time for this. I got other stuff to do. Life is too Yeah, like I'm I'm turning like I'm turning I'm 55 and I'm just like and I'm looking at this. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me! Like, you know, they they could at least like be grateful that you created a platform that they could even go on and. But, I know, but here's the thing, though. Or, it's the or, end. Or whatever, but just be respectful. No, like you would think, right? Like but you yeah, would think, you like, like if somebody when somebody invites me to their channel, I mean their platform or their group, I always say, hey, thank you for the invite. I really appreciate it because I'm generally. You know, thankful that you would take time to invite me to your thing. And I would never dare think that I would just be on somebody's group that I could just go off on a tangent to start calling people names or profanity like that. I could mm -hmm. that would never that's never entered my mind that you I would just do that. Like so it blows my mind. Like you just said that you they would just that you that's okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, they don't know like the the effort that you put in, that you know, the time that you put in, uh, money. I know. I'm assuming, but they, you know, but it's selfish. They don't care. It's yeah. it's about them. You know. So those are those are people that just they haven't gone out of the it. You know, it's you know me, me, me. You know. It's so, what can you do? What can you do? But uh, go, uh, going back to your uh, question, Dean, about challenges. Uh, it's like, I like, definitely like. Uh, one of the challenges is, is like marketing advertising. That's like something that that's always been a challenge for us. Mm. How social media works. Yeah, getting the word out there, you know, and I know because you know there's others. It's I don't know if competitive is the right term, but did marketing like do you guys? I mean, do you guys pay for your own marketing or just? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah same here. Like I'm not ready to. You know, to me, it's gonna be Facebook and YouTube. I, I like. And that's a great way. That's all I'm gonna have time for. But like the pay from yeah, marketing and all that. I just don't see. I, I don't. I don't. I, don't, I just don't see it. <laughs> just, Especially you know. if you're not generating any kind of income from it, then now you're. That's, what I mean. that's my whole point. So that's my whole point. Yeah, yeah. that's my whole right. Right. Exactly. So why would I? Yeah, I know. I know. Like I enjoy doing it. It's a hobby. Yeah. Obviously, money was never. And the money, if is if this were to make any. I would definitely donate it over there for kids programs and or stuff mm -hmm. or old master or stuff like of that nature. You know what I mean? And, and that's something I've, I've definitely made known in the group, you know. Um, that's great. You know. you know, Dean, we just interviewed uh Grandmaster Rene Tungsten and he brought that up about you. Oh, did he really? Oh, that was nice of him. Oh, yeah, it's coming out uh in May. So yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, be good, there. good. Oh, he's a great yeah, huh? Yeah. What an what an ambassador, huh? Yeah, is, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great man. You know, mm. yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, and that's not, you know, that's a nice thing too about this. Like, if I haven't done this, like, I would have never met him. That's for me. That's one of yeah, you know what I mean? my rewards for why we do this. 
being yeah. able to meet people like yourself, everybody that we meet in yeah. the community is just beautiful people. You know what I mean? And yeah, I know. And it makes you like forget about the have, trolls. Yeah, these grandmasters that could basically kill me, like, you know, a flick of a wrist. Yeah, kind of They're just the nicest people. Like, I met Paul and June. You, you know, know what I mean? I went down yeah. there, and they like they called me. I mean, they, they those those guys were so hospitable and yeah. so nice. You know, they didn't have to. I mean, the thing that they did, just they those guys were just one far beyond like what they needed to. Yeah. I mean, just really, really, and people I've interviewed, like people that I generally now like click with and uh, like. I mean, like you know, Julius on here that helps me now. Like if I didn't do this, I would have never met Julius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> The network is, and, you know what I mean? I would have been like, Julia, so <laughs> to me, that's a reward. I, I love meeting the, the yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, when this COVID mess ends, I have like, I could easily think that you're so people uh, to meet, uh, and all that. Uh, there's another question, Jesse. Do you have anything else to add, or do you are you ready for a question? Oh, I was going to add on to that. I mean, within oh, go ahead, sure, please do. I mean, within the FMA community itself, I mean, once you've established, you know, a, a rapport and a connection with people, like, then they treat you like, like, friend, like family. Um, so it's like, you know, if they said, yeah, if you're ever in my town, hit me up. You have a place to crack. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. After I'm done training, you know, we go out, eat and have a drink and then, you know, it's good times. So, no, I know. I think that's part of the Filipino hospitality. I mean, we're, Filipinos are known yeah, for that. Yeah, I've seen it. I mean, I, well, I mean, for first time I experienced it down Florida with, um, and with the, and with my teacher vehicle Perrine, very like that. But yeah, just really, uh, yeah, just good people, man, for mm -hmm. sure. Julius Dean is such a positive one. So, wow, Julius, that means a lot because um, I got some stuff I got to work on. <laughs> All right, so we got a question from Dean Franco. A question: Do any of you think upfront about questions that the interview might find delicate? so that you would avoid them or maybe ask deliberately in an exact reason. So what I do personally, and I'll, I'll let these guys get a chance to answer that too. It's a great question, by the way, is what I'll do is I have my list of questions and I intentionally avoid politics. So I know they're not going to bother them because I just, I just don't go down there. However, though, when I do get questions PM to me, private message to me, I will, if there's something that, kind of raises a flag with me, I will definitely uh, share it with them before we go live and I'll get their level of comfortability, whether they want to answer that or not. So I leave it up to them, whether they want to avoid it or not. And that definitely has happened where I've had uh, guests not want to just answer certain questions. And I'm so glad I did bring it up to them beforehand as a, before doing it. Um, or maybe ask deliberately. Um, I've never did anything deliberate. No, I just, I treat my guests just with such respect because I'm so grateful they're coming on. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to do anything to discourage future guests or do something that wasn't fair to them. I'm hoping that's what you're asking. Jess, uh, anybody else want to take a crack at this question? Well, yeah, I mean, we take the same approach. I mean, before inter any interview, um, you know, we'll have a discussion with the guru grandmaster Mm -hmm. uh, beforehand and then we'll you know, show them the list of questions um to get their approval uh but other than that yeah we're pretty much just on the same boat of like you know not trying to entrap or you know <laughs> you know get uh, an instructor um you know in an uncomfortable position to answer a certain mm -hmm. i mean they would say like uh, i'm not going to put the name out there but a certain uh, one instructor said he's, he's like um you're not going to bring up uh instructor so-and-so are you i'm like if you don't want us to <laughs> we won't bring it up because yeah 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 you have to do that man because man that, that people find out about that and then you might not get featured guests guru guru mike anything you want to add uh well you know we know that there's the division and all that kind of stuff the infighting out fighting whatever you want to call it and we just want a platform where people can share their art their lineage whatever it is that they want to share and you don't necessarily have to throw any politics in there. I mean, that's, you know, I'm sure people want us to ask things like that. You know what I mean? But it's, I just don't really uh, see the point in doing that, really. And number one, no one's going to want to come on and, and be interviewed. As I mean, they see they that. that like, you know, yeah, we're going to like stop them into something. Yeah, I mean, because you know why? Because we, I tell you, you go ahead, you do that. Like, you make a conscious choice 
to ask something that you know you shouldn't have or you know they weren't comfortable with. And you know what's going to look like on the screen, people watching? We look like dicks. Exactly, because the person, the Sorry, guest is going to be I'm like, sure. you know, the whole gas, their whole facial expression. And so the people are watching are going to see that disconnect and they're going to see that disapproval on their face. And I don't know who's winning that equation. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I hope that answers the question. That was a great question, though. Man. That but, was you know, we, we kind of uh, leave that up to the viewers, to whatever they want to discuss in the comments. We're just putting it out there. It's up to them, you know, the viewers mm -hmm. to, if they got issues, whatever, that's up to them. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're not going to yeah. stop that. I mean, if they want to have an argument in the comments, whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. That's uh, earmuffs. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, before we do release an interview, we do send a draft to the Guru Grandmaster for their approval. Oh, so they can adjust or, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if, a matter of fact, um, oh yeah, you're right, yeah, because that's gonna be a reflection on you, so you definitely want them to be happy, because then, I tell you, it's very easy for your um, track record to go like down the slopes quick. Very easy. One incident, one thread, where they can hang on, and that's gonna spread like wildfire, and before you know it, in this community, um, you know, and it takes, you know, so if you, you know, if you got a really good reputation, it's so easy to lose it. You know? right. and, and, you know, I'm sure this happens with you too. Well, you're live, so it's different. But, yeah. you know, we, we will, during our interview, we might say something like, or the, the, the GM might say off the record. And then we'll have a discussion, you know, during the interview, but, you know, we don't add that into the actual interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah, you yeah know, but there, I'm live, so I make like sure that. everything beforehand right, is right. right. You know, but the thing, it goes okay because one, I just make a practice. I'm not going to put the person in an uncomfortable chair. Mm -hmm. And any questions I get in, I screen them and run them by them. So they know like there's going to be no surprises, whatever. And I ask them questions for viewers and all that. And there's one time what happened on here when, when somebody posts a question on the side here, which happens frequently, there was, I think, one incident where the question was just, and we just didn't answer it. You know what I mean? We just, and you just, that's what you got to do. You, know? you got to respect the guest. But the, you know what I mean? Right. If you want more. <laughs> I mean, they're you taking know? their time out too, you know, to, to interview. Yeah, yeah. now you're going to like sabotage them. I mean, mm -hmm. that's. Uh... <laughs> it's going to be a reflection on us. So we don't want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It could, and again, yeah, it's not well, about us. It's. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, we're all on the same page on that one. But great, great question again. Um, okay, what do you. Okay, future, you know, coming up on the end here, and you, this has been. Wonderful. But all right, let's uh, future goals. So, what are the future goals for FMA Pulse and yourselves? Uh, Guru Jess, future goals for FMA Pulse and yourself? Uh, eventually, future goals with FMA Pulse is to be doing this full time, um, traveling, because like not only do we want to cover the FMA scene here, but we do want to make our big goal is to go back to the Philippines. Hopefully, mm -hmm. stay here maybe six months to a year and cover all the styles in the Philippines. Oh, that would be wonderful, huh? Uh, and then see, like, where's there other FMA in the world? So, like, we want to cover the FMA scene in Latin America, Europe, you know, Africa. Because they're all different, the scenes in the different countries. Yeah, you know, Europe, FMA, Europe, there's, a, there's a vibe that's different in each country. And it's, yeah, it's Europe cool. is, I see some parallel Europe with America because of the Anasano influence on it, and PTK definitely see parallel with but I can't speak on like South America mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean that'd be interesting you know yeah yeah well and how about yourself your personal goals per I mean personal goals uh since I am a uh, entrepreneur self-employed is just if I could do more work doing video work um and FMA pulse at the same time I I'll be happy so that'd be great. Think about that. You guys could create FMA Pulse in there where you guys could actually like, yeah. man, that would, how, how, man, how fantastic would that be? Wow. Yeah. Guru Mike, future goals for you from FMA Pulse and yourself. My main goal for FMA Pulse is same as Jesse's, you know, to someday maybe be able to do this full time so we could really focus on creating good content and consistent content regularly. But I also want FMA Pulse to be complete as a as an archive as complete as possible you know really have all the gms that have you know throughout the the generations that we have them on there that you know their bios everything 
all the you know, major instructors going on right now. And just really uh, like a, just a, a main resource site on FMA. So someone who's new to FMA, they go to FMA Pulse and then they can read whatever they want and learn whatever they want. And I want, I want to have a database of all the instructors around the world. So wherever they live, they could type in their zip code or whatever. And then, oh, I mean. you know, because FMA is hard to find, you know, depending on where you live. So even if it's two hours away, some people are willing to drive two hours away. To, to oh, no. That would, that's that's a great idea where somebody, if they were right, that they were relocating, moving or something like that, they could use your source, plug in their zip code. And yeah. that, wow, that's fantastic. I, we I, just want to be a, like a, just a huge resource for FMA. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great goal. Great goal. How about yourself? Personal goal? As far as the journey or uh, what have you? My goal is to continue training. Um, you know, I turned 50 last year so for some reason now i want to like just do more boxing and i want to yeah. i want to try to compete at the uh the chicago golden gloves whenever it's going to happen oh no so they have like a, a, a masters, awesome. we do masters yeah, yeah, so what? But, you yeah, know definitely. i want to do it now that my That's body awesome. is still uh you know still forgiving i would love to do that if they had it out here if they had a division like that i would love to do that with they they have have golden gloves in uh, connecticut like a master's division really okay it, it's, nah, I mean, well, don't quote me on that. I would have to, it would be, it wouldn't be near me, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Not that that would be the all, um, it would have to be one of the bigger cities. I don't have to look into that, but uh, but I'm not sure that, but nothing, like, it, it, I don't think it's nowhere's developed like Chicago, New York City, yeah. like what you guys have. You know what I mean? I just, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. You said, um, to be able to do an extended stay in the Philippines. We would just love to, starting from the south and just work our way up to the north and just cover all the FMA as much as we can. I hope it works out for you guys. I wanna cover the the uh, the swordsmiths, the Pandai Pira or the Pandais, is that what it's called, the, the sword makers? Just you know everything that has to do with, with Philippine martial arts, sword making, whatever, everything. Uh, we're getting somebody on this month who makes sword? He, I mean, he lives here in the states, but just, but still, he guys just making incredible stuff. And I'm just curious, just the process of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope that works out well. I think those are great goals. I, I hope they all pan out for you guys. I think the zip code thing, like you were referencing, I mean, I think that would be a wonderful resource for people that are moving, relocating, you know, what have you. Um, what I'm here now, usually, I always, I don't ask this all the time, but just um, once in a while, like the every other interview or depending on time allotment and what have you. But what, um, Guru Jesse, what, uh, what would you like to see as far as positive changes in our community, FMA community? Well, from observation, uh, you know, it, it's hard to unify FMA under one umbrella. Uh, we, I've seen attempts to do it, um, and it's difficult to do that because, again, ego, politics, and how they want things run always just gets in the way. So instead of trying to unify everything under one umbrella, just create a network, um, you know, just a positive network between all FMA styles um, in terms of like, okay, uh, we're in this FMA network where it's like, okay, uh, like if I had a student and he says he's relocating to, you know, Arizona, I'll be like, oh, train with these guys. Mm. You know, it shouldn't be about, you know, one style you know, formalized into one style. It's just, you know, FMA has different flavors. Everyone has their own recipe of adobo. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. you know, just try it. And, uh, you know, it's like, as long as you have a good rapport with the with the group and instructors, you know, just create that. Yeah. Because I personally believe there are more similarities than there are differences. In the different no, I, I totally agree. It's a methodology. It, right. It's it's one, it, one maybe focuses on more on the attribute development. Right. Where maybe one is more drill oriented, I mean, but again, um, more the same than different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, sure, fair enough. Yeah, I, yeah. So, yeah, just you, uh, believers to just when people ask me, like, yeah, do you know uh, this system or whatever? I'm like, yeah, there's one not too far from here. I don't, I don't care. You know, I'm not trying to get them into our system or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. Yeah, I tell people, say, I you know it's so funny, like, you know, honesty. Being honest, you know, integrity and being honest, like being honest with somebody. Hey, look, you know, I, you might not like what I do, but so and so is 
30 minutes down the highway or something. Or maybe this instructor is better for beginners. You know, because some instructors, they teach the old school way. Yeah. You know, once you jump in and it's the right in the fire and they're lost and then they never they don't come yeah, back. And their hands and are getting that are really good with beginners that will you right, know, right. They're being ground up and they don't mind, but somebody will like you know, you're if you're not used to your hand getting I've seen your hand getting lit up. <laughs> they never come back. They never come back. Yeah. No, I know, I know. Be in in those structures because they have such a such a lens. You know, I don't, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm not. It's I'm not giving an opinion here. Teaching style yeah. and some people yeah. fine with that. Yeah, yeah, right. And some sometimes some people appreciate it and they like it. I mean, they like that classical. Like I have one teacher, uh, you know, that um, there's you know there's pain to strike. I mean, there's there's contact and um, and it's not for everybody. It's right. you know, it's what you want to have your journey and and what have you. But but doesn't mean it's good or bad or right. You know, long term. But it's not for everybody. Home. Yeah, right. And just like if I went to, uh, you know, like something that's depending on how they teach or drills like that, that might not be for the same thing. It might not be the best for a person, but it doesn't mean it's bad. Just right, you know. Um, Guru Mike, what would you like to see as far as uh, changes, positive changes within our community? Well, like I was saying earlier, I feel that there are more, more politics. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. That would take all the fun out of it, Dean. Um, just for people to understand that, you know, FMA is from the Philippines. We have more similarities than we do, than we have differences. And, you know, if I think it's the people that just are going to fight that all the way, the crab mentality that is not going to help us any, you know, just we're, oh, we're no. doing the same thing. Ultimately, we're doing the same thing. Just promote our art, the Philippine martial arts. I don't care what system it is. Yeah. You know, just promote it and let's let it grow. And then. You know, have your have your whatever. Right. Yeah. And it's, no, it I, help all the time. It does not help. No, no, and that doesn't go away. I don't think we'll ever. Um, and I hate. And I, I, I don't want to be right. I hope I'm wrong. Matter of fact, but I don't. If that matter of fact, because you know the crab mentality, and you guys know better than this. But it, to me, it was there was always the association with the older kind of generation. But you know what, though, man, I'm seeing it kind of with the middle age people now. And the reason why I bring the significance of that up is um, I think that's going to hinder unity or, or not, not, or not unity, but the whole thing, which Guru Jesse was saying, like, you know, just being, you know, it doesn't have to be that, you know, every, we need to come together or one system kind of all that. But I think that's going to hinder just not from the perspective of uni, but from the perspective of growth of FMA and the promotion thereof, I think it's going to hinder it. And I, again, I, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't know. I will say, Dean, if, if you don't mind me asking, you know, Jesse and I, we've been doing this for over 10 years now. And we have seen improvement in that, though. Like these, oh, Zoom, these online yeah. classes, you know, they're, they're different systems, but you oh, know, I people are becoming more open-minded to... Oh, yeah. So we, we are seeing that, which is, which is, it's a good sign. I no, no, I totally agree. Like when I, like when you see people that are jumping in these online classes with that, and I don't think, and I don't think that would have occurred pre COVID. Like, in other words, no. like I look at from the lens, like, okay, well, well this is what I do. Um, and in the absence of online courses, like why, you know, like in no COVID, like, well, why would I go up there and do this? This is what I do. But because of the on COVID and the restrictions, I think that did open the mm -hmm. doors. I do agree there, which totally is you know, there. definitely totally agree. It's for the best, of course, you know. Yeah. But okay, uh, folks that are watching, I just want to run, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this down as well. So their website again, if you missed it, is www.fmapulse.com. And their YouTube channel is FMA Pulse. And you guys just I just so I'll tell you, you guys, congrats, ten thousand. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. That is fantastic. How long? How long the channel's been up? How long? I think. Uh, well, we had a YouTube channel ten years ago, but I lost the login info, <laughs> so we have to recreate it. Um, I think we started twenty eighteen. Just the new one, December twenty seventeen. Something like that. yeah. So a few years. Good but we've we've had a YouTube channel since the very beginning. Yeah. yeah, but that's, I mean, but still, I mean, that's fantastic. You guys are, wow, fantastic, fantastic. That's, that's great. 
man. What's well, same for you, Dean? Thank, thank you so much. And what you're doing is, is oh, helping. I really appreciate it. It's totally yeah. helping. Yeah, and, you know the best. You know the best gratification I get from this is that people that appreciate it. You know what I mean? You know that's that's what keeps the ball rolling, and then sent it for me to continue to do this. You know, it's so the last I'm not going to say who we their names. You know, they they talk very highly of you. Oh, oh, that's nice to hear. Good. Right. So thank you very much, Dean, for you are. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, I want to wish you guys the best of luck, of course. Um, and you and you got a trip down to Florida, sunny Florida, uh, go Jess. So I hope you have a good trip down there with those boys down there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be heading there Thursday, so I still got a lot of stuff to do before I head out. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a wild bunch down there. Um, I'm going to, uh, I think, Mike froze. <laughs> pretty good. Next February, I think I'm going to go. Last couple of years, I went to Miami, but I think this next year, I think we're going to go over more towards the Fort Myers area and, and all that. So that'll be fun. But yeah, hopefully that all materialize. But you're good. Yeah, they're they're a fun bunch down there. Have you seen those guys down there before? Yeah. Uh, was it uh, 2019, March of 2019? I was uh, last time I was in Miami um, for a seminar. So I was. You know, oh, okay. So you've been. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so do anything for me at Pulse at the time. Uh, it was just for more. Oh, it was more you just going down there and, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Mike must have, uh, he froze. Okay. Um, that's okay. Come here. But, yeah, I want to thank you guys. You know, please, when you talk to Mike, and you know, please tell him, you know, just what I'm telling you. I, I appreciate you guys coming on. You know, thank you. Oh, no problem. Thanks yeah. for having us. Oh, anytime, anytime. And hopefully, you know, we'll be, we'll be in touch and, um, and all that because <clears> – <throat> After your trips on that down the road, you know, love to have you guys back on. You know, once you guys, uh, especially if you get get that library going and and all that, you know, it'd be fun. So, <laughs> definitely. But, all right. Well, you take care of yourself. Have a safe trip down there, and uh, and please uh, extend my gratitude to uh, Guru Mike. All right, we'll do. All right, you take care of yourself. Thanks to all the viewers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, take care. All right, bye. -bye. <clears throat> All right, not a goodie. Um, who is next? Who is next? Who is next? Um, I'm gonna say there. Uh, Tuesday, I have. Uh, I'm gonna believe it's Jesse. I'm, I'm sorry, not Jesse. Uh, confusing. It's Julius, and Julius will be interviewing Tuhan Brandon Jordan. And that is, again, this Tuesday. So check that out with uh, Julius, um, 7 o'clock Eastern time and all that. And if you haven't, uh, check out the YouTube channel, FMA Discussion, as well as FMA Pulse. And I'll be leaving their website again. And those of you who commented, watched, and chipped in, I appreciate it. And uh, we will see you again. Uh, for me, it'll be Thursday. And for uh, it'll be Tuesday, it'll be Julius. And good night. Take care.